Hello and welcome back to Spanish Build Academy. My name is Spanish, and today we are talking about the dark art of hover miners. Uh, you are probably all familiar with hover miners in the sense that well, there's some really good ones on the workshop. We've got three of those in front of us now. We've got the uh, the drill sergeant uh, by Lift Pizza, the the drill hole maker thingy, and the the ladybug. I uh, think <laughs> the old. The old ladybug, you know, she's been around for a while. And, and I suppose if you're looking for a sort of all-purpose, kind of cheap, early game hover driller, then look no further than these three. These three are great, uh, but they're not without their problems. The thing with hover miners that's really difficult is to get something that's uh, cheap, quick, maneuverable, and easy to get around when you're underground. These are drilling giant holes in the ground with these things. You don't want them to take up a lot of space and get stuck. But that does mean that they don't come with a lot of features. So starting with uh, Lift Pizza's drill sergeant over here, we don't have any fridges or constructors um, or even cargo boxes. We have the harvest box. And that's about it. <laughs> we move with the, the, uh, the drill hole maker thingy. And we have a little bit more. We have a fridge and a cargo box. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so, uh, in order to keep the size down and to keep the speed and maneuverability up, a lot of these smaller hovers sacrifice any kind of functionality in terms of survivability, cargo, things like that, that, that could be really useful for something like this that you're going to be scamping around the starter world in. The problem is, as you start to make hover miners bigger to facilitate more stuff, I'm sorry, Excalibur. <laughs> the drill pup here is amazing, uh, but it gets stuck underground because it's long. And um, when you're trying to turn it in a tunnel or it flips upside down or it goes crazy, it can be quite difficult to get back out of the hole that you've dug it into. That being said, it does come with all the mod cons that you could probably want in a hover vessel, including plenty of storage, constructors, and and stuff like that so you know it's a real balancing act to get correct the problem is the bigger that you make a hover vessel although you might be able to make it um, with full defenses able to look after itself and have all the mod cons on the interior as well with cargo constructors fridges and all that stuff the bigger it gets the harder it actually becomes to control now Betsy here, which is a hover miner that I built, is so big that she can't turn around inside a hole. And that she's not big enough that she can one-shot an entire deposit. Now depending on the size of the deposit, very small deposits she can chew up quite nicely. Small, yeah, just about. Medium, nah, you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to get all the ore out in one shot. What do I mean by one shot? I mean, you basically, you position yourself as a above a deposit and you just drill straight down straight through the core of it and then reverse out of it you you no turning or anything like that you'd literally fix drill in and out betsy here can do that very well she's got amazing reverse thrust and forward thrust she can get in and out pretty much vertically given her size that's fairly impressive but if you want to be able to turn inside a deposit in order to mine out the stuff around the edges that's where these ones come back in you know these They've got the same number of drills, so they drill equally as fast as anything bigger. But they can't really look after themselves. You can't survive in them very much. So where's the balance, I suppose? That's the difficulty. Is it that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you could go absolutely ridiculous with hover miners. From one extreme to the other. But they all come with problems. Mining is never easy in this game no matter which one you choose really so I want to see if we can explore uh, a hover miner that kind of strikes on all the balances using the lessons that we learn from each one that we have experience of and we can see from lift beats drill sergeant here that the engines are sort of halfway up the thing has a forward tilt which is what we want in order to tilt the machine down into a deposit and dig it out DMHT uh, it has a more balanced hopper engine setup but it actually has two engines on the back and only one on the front so it allows it to tilt down a little bit more um, and the ladybug is just your standard hover engines uh, you know 
all four around the edges but it's got plenty of rcs's so you can flip it forward you know the the, the theme continues the hover engine setup basically so you've got a group on the back here to help it tilt forward so on and so forth um betsy here has a bunch of uh, custom shortcuts in order to turn off the front and mid hover engines to help it actually tip forward um, but there's a really annoying bug with that and uh, the gold digger here is just a monster that you can't control in any realistic environment so we know that when we build a hover miner we need it to be able to point down very easily but at the same time we want to make it fast and maneuverable enough to dig out a deposit nice and quick armored enough to look after itself with some weapons but also with some luxuries such as constructors and health stations and cargo and fridges and things like that something that we can actually live in and explore in now i built betsy in order to do that very thing but she turned out to be enormous so um yeah, she never really turned out to be a very good miner <laughs> she was very good at making holes in the ground um either with her drills or her turrets but that was about it so we're going to see if we can build a hover miner today and trying to take the lessons of hover miners before and try and get something in between really. So I'm going to pick standard steel blocks because I don't want this thing to be too heavy. Normal hover engines. Again, I'm going to try and keep the weight down so that we don't need to use so many RCSs and so many thrusters. I'm not going to bother with the jet thrusters because they weigh 800 kilograms and they only give us 90 kilonewtons. There's a the standard thrusters. They, they weigh 600 and give us 80, so I think that's a better power to weight ratio, to be honest. So we're going to go with those. Uh, let's just pick up a load of other stuff that we want in here as well. We've got um, the small thrusters. We might want some of those. We're going to need ammo box, harvester module. We are going to need some drills. I'm going to stick with the standard drills for now. We're going to need a cockpit. And we're going to want things like an armor locker. We're going to want a health station. We're going to want a detector, a constructor. We're going to want fridges, uh, some cargo boxes. And we'll stick with that for now. Okay. <laughs> let's see what we can come up with so the first thing I need to decide really is how big I want to make this one of the first things about making a hover miner is the drill layout so uh, we can see the drill layout is varied on all these different ones so uh, the drill sergeant has sort of the two underside and the two on the side the DMHT has a rounded as does the ladybug uh, the drill pup has a sort of square rectangular approach as does betsy here and the gold digger has a rounded approach so it depends i think what kind of hole you want to make square or round depend uh it will influence where you place your drills what also will influence where you place the drills is the cockpit you choose and we could choose an internal cockpit much like the dmht and the ladybug or we can go for a standard cockpit i'm going to go i'm going to go in this case for a standard one because then we don't need to mess around with making interior space and we can essentially stuff everything into a nice convenient space but at the same time I'm going to choose a slightly different path than everything else in how I'm going to lay the drills out I'm going to go for a almost completely square approach let's spread them out a bit let's see I want to place on either side of this block I want one in the middle on the bottom and one in the middle on the top make sure they get lined up properly so there we go I got my drills are in a sort of rectangular formation here uh, so I've got a nice visibility from the cockpit to the left and the right so it should create with that a relatively square ish hole in the ground and hopefully that will mean that it won't jump around so much and that's the plan at least anyway uh, let's put some hover engines on next I'm going to put the front ones for quite far back in the build here so that there is a lot of weight on the front it's going to naturally tip the front of the hover down um, I'm just going to put some blocks some of these blocks I'm going to remove later because they're only here really so that I can build off these devices basically so I'm just trying to think how much how long do I want to make it I don't want to make it too long because obviously with lessons from the pup here and Betsy we know that anything too long, once it gets underground, it just can't turn around. So let's keep it relatively square in design, almost as good as the ladybug is long as it is wide. Um, we should be able to turn around based on the sort of width of the hole that, that the drills make initially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the lesson from the DMHT. I'm going to put two hover engines 
on the back quarter and I'm going to say that's the back there okay now let's just put in our fuel tanks and generators here and RCS's and thrusters so we want at least two fuel tanks I'd say and uh, we'll start with one generator and we'll put um, some RCS's in now RCS is uh, basically more effective the more spread out they are. So if I put two in the middle and the rest on the outside, that should be hella maneuverable. <laughs> uh, thrusters, I'm going to very simply, I'm going to place six on the back so that we've got plenty of forward thrust. Now this thing's going to be nice and quick. I'm going to put uh, six facing forward as well. And I'm going to use... Um, You know, invert them on the sides. I'm going to use the small thrusters to augment them. Where did I put them? There they are. Okay, so this thing should now move. So let's give it a go. Let's just quickly turn off symmetry mode here. We're going to jump in. I know it's not very attractive right now. But we can we can tie it up with all sorts of um, fluff on the outside later. I just want to see. I mean, it's it's very maneuverable, very quick. I just want to see how it behaves underground. Really, harvest box is missing. Yeah, we'll we'll add that later. I don't really mind losing crushed stone right now. Just want to see how it handles. I'm noticing that we're going to need to add another generator in because we're using 106% power. That's fine. The trick with this one is going to be adding all the luxuries in, especially something like the health box, which takes up quite a lot of room. Um, but so far, I'm actually it's doing very well. <laughs> it's doing very well. Let's, uh, let's see if we can turn it around. We can, and we're out. Quite happy with that. It seems to handle very well. It was easy to point down into the ground. It was easy to turn around, and uh, it seems to be very quick as well, which is great. Excellent. So that that is basically how you build a hover miner. Now, this, there are some tricks that we need to do. I mean, the, the core we need to remove that and place that somewhere better, and obviously we need to make it look nice. So uh, the next trick is fitting that, those, this, that, did I pick up a constructor, that, that, the, the ammo box, All right let's put this in first because we don't really have a lot of room here do we, <laughs> so this is where we remove all these blocks that we put in here before because we don't need these anymore, and we can use this space Um, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to remove the fuel tanks and the generators Now don't worry, I am going to encase those so they're not completely and utterly in a stupid position. Um, so they have some armor on the underside and I'm going to try and put two generators in. Again, I will encase those in some armor. But what that does mean is that we have now a nice space back here, albeit unaccessible by hand but that's what the P menu is for for a harvest box and two cargo boxes which is nice now on the side here we can stick things like our fridges put two on top of each other because next to it I want to put an armor locker okay just on top of that all I'm going to do is stick a shutter door um, 
or maybe two in the middle and that will hide that away the same over here with that right there so already we've got our health station and stuff now um, the constructor yeah, stick on the top and I'm going to put a nice access hatch on the top for that so we've got two cargo we've got fridges we've got an armor locker and a health station what are we missing we're missing an ammo box a detector ah the detector is going to be interesting so ammo box again um, so you can figure out where to stick this now ammo boxes obviously you don't want to stick them too close to anything vulnerable I'm gonna stick it on the bottom here which is possibly a bad idea <laughs> we shall find out and the detector is is fairly easy we just get rid of these three blocks here and we can we can stick it in there let's uh, there we go so it's stash the detector there and in order to keep the weight down what we can do is we can get rid of all these blocks here I need to move that core as well so let's see if we can figure out where to stick that core and what I was going to say was with those blocks that we just replaced we, we can replace those with truss blocks which are nice and lightweight um, I'm actually going to replace this RCS with the core Let's grab a new core and a new RCS. We're going to place the RCS there, and then place the core there, and there we go. That is our hover miner. I'm going to speed things up, and we're going to make this thing look reasonably nice, <laughs> as nice as we can make it. Okay, so I'll be right back.
Okay, here we go. I think this is finished now. Other than some texture and some paint, which I'll do off camera, I'm quite happy with this, uh, how it's turned out, actually. The only thing that I haven't done on there is add some oxygen and um, oxygen tanks and O2 station. Now, I can easily add that in because we've got plenty of space down here. So you guys can add in some extra upgrades as well as you see fit. I'm just going to stick some O2 tanks in there though. Now taking the uh, med station out, uh, but I can put an O2 station in here or the med station, or I can take these two blocks out the back and put the O2 station in there instead. Um, or we swap out the fridges for the O2 station, but I'll leave that one up to you guys. I'll put the med station back for now because I think that is an excellent addition to any hover vessel. Um, yeah, the O2 station, I think I'll fit in like that. We'll be fine. We've got the cargo boxes exposed on the back anyway. I figure that once you get some shutter door or some ramp blocks, you can cover those up. But I think they're fine as is. This thing turns on the dime, so if you do are getting uh, taken by surprise from the rear, uh, you can turn around on the spot. It's no problem. Um, the only other thing that you might want to add on here are some hover boosters. The probably best to remove some of these under blocks and just slap them straight on there. Alternatively, just stick them on these these uh, skids. Um, but there we go. That is our hover miner. I will name it, paint it, and uh, texture it, and put it on the workshop for all you guys to enjoy. But before I do that, let me just see. Let's just quickly do that and let's see how she handles now with all this extra weight. So she is a bit slower now, but we would expect that given that we've just added a whole ton of blocks to her. So when she was just the the guts, she was very quick, very fast, very turned very fast and, and things like that. Now she's still turning absolutely fine. She's digging absolutely fine. Um, I just want to get her underground into a tunnel and make sure that we can turn around and get back out again. Now, there's no quicker or slower actually drilling, which makes sense because we've still only got six drills on here. We've got plenty of forward thrust with those eight thrusters there. Okay, I think we're underground enough now. Let's just turn around, which is fine, and uh, we're out. We are hokey dokey. It is a, a really annoying thing with Imperion at the moment is the camera, and uh, the camera doesn't crew quite know what it's doing when it's underground um, but there we go I think um, pending a name that that is our in-between hover miner and I'm gonna give it a name and I'll put it on the workshop and I'll link it down below for you guys to subscribe and enjoy let me know what you think uh, about it and let me know if you have a better hover miner that you go to what's your favorite hover miner let me know in the comments uh, are you a fan of one of the originals, <laughs> the best and brightest? Are you a fan of something bigger that's maybe tricky to use just because you've got the luxury of heavy armor, defense, and um, all the luxuries inside? Um, or do you have something a bit like this thing here where it is a halfway house? You've got luxuries, you've got defense, but you've also got the mobility and maneuverability to put those six drills to really good use. Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Hopefully, I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.